This is Vector Calculus by Lindgren. This is a book that a person could use to learn vector calculus on their own. It's an old book. It's probably hard to find, but worth it if you can get your hands on it. There aren't that many books on vector calculus, and this one is one of the first ones because it's older. Also, a lot of other books that had similar names uh, in the past, a lot of times they had more physics than actual math. And this book kind of addresses that, and we'll see that in a moment. In this video, we're gonna take a look at this book and see what it contains. You can see it's a very thin book. I'm gonna smell it here, just... Oh, it smells amazing. This is an EX library or X library book because it used to belong to the Eastern College Library in St. David's, Pennsylvania. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. All right, let's open it up and take a look inside this masterpiece, Vector Calculus. The typesetting is very good in this book. I'm gonna show you that as well later. I feel like it's, they did a really good job for a book from this era. Here you can see the copyrights, super, super old, right? 63 and 64. This would be the third printing, 1967. And here, let's, let's take a look at the preface because this is really important and useful to know this book is intended as a text for a short course in the elements of vector analysis in three dimensions. Its name was chosen to emphasize the fact that it is not a book on the analysis of problems in mechanics and electromagnetics using vector methods, but it is a presentation of the mathematics, the algebra, and calculus of vectors. Yeah, so I, I think I misspoke. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of books from this era and earlier that are titled like vector analysis or vector methods and they're on this. I actually have one called Vector Methods. Uh, I think it's by Rutherford and it's pretty much, you know, it has math but uh, there's a lot of emphasis on the actual physics. A mathematics course based on this book would ordinarily follow the usual first course in differential and integral calculus which is assumed as a prerequisite. Okay. It reviews the notions of limit, continuity, derivative, and integral from elementary calculus and introduces more advanced topics. Line integrals, surface integrals, Jacobians, and directional derivatives in a setting of real problems. Yeah, cool. Let, let's take a look at the contents so you can see what it contains. And so if you're in a Calc 3 course now, this book is worth getting. However, there are things in your Calc 3 course that you're going to learn. I'm sorry, I have to smell it. Oh, it's incredible, it's incredible. So there are things in your Calc 3 course that you will learn that you will not find in this book. Uh, why? It's just because topics change. There's also things in this book that you won't find in your Calc 3 course. So, and I guess if the topics were exactly the same and everything was exactly the same, then maybe it wouldn't be as good. You know, it's probably better that it's different. So it starts with vector algebra, which is just really basic stuff like dot product, cross product. Uh, there's, there, are, there are some things here, um, like reciprocal sets, that you don't learn in Calc 3. Functions of a single variable. Okay. And then we go to angular velocity and then functions of position. And then Green's, Stokes, and related theorems. And then curve linear coordinates. You'll notice it says nothing about answers. However, this book does actually have answers to the exercises in the back of the book. Let me show you. I'm sorry, I gotta smell it again. I know it's bad. Oh, this, this particular copy, this particular book smells incredible. Here are the answers to the problems. This book is pretty rare too. Um, I don't know, if I can find any copies, I'll, I'll leave a link. So you see there are plenty of answers. Not everything is there, but there's a lot there. So I think that that's helpful. Look at the, look at the uh, art, look at artwork. Look at the diagrams and stuff. So they do a really good job, or he did a really good job, Lindgren, of, you know, of creating this book. The typesetting is just so pro. It's so pro. Functions of a single variable. 
Hmm. They say here, look at this. It says, although the purpose of this chapter is the study of vector functions of a single variable, material is included on the calculus of scalar functions, which for many will be a review. This review seems desirable not only for purposes of refreshment, but also because the definitions for vector functions are so nearly like those for scalar functions. Cool, right? So they go through and they give you, they give you a review. Let's keep going, let's keep looking at this. And then here we have vector functions of a single variable. All right, they have all, the, all these things here. And you do do this in, in Calc 3, however, not like this. It's not presented like this, okay? Um, you basically just find some derivatives, you know? <laughs> uh, that's, that's basically what you do. Yeah, so like to differentiate, let me show you, it's really easy. So here's, here's, a, here's a vector valued function, right? And to differentiate this vector valued function, it's a vector function of a single variable. It's vector valued because when you plug in a value for t, it spits out a vector, right? You have i, j, and k. That's a, you can think of that as a, as a vector in three dimensional space. So to find the derivative, you just differentiate each piece. So the derivative of t is one, so you just get i plus two t, j plus three t squared k. That would be the answer to part a. And then why is v of t continuous at all, at all t? and then determine the limit uh, as t approaches two. And you can determine that uh, by using continuity by basically plugging in two. So because it's continuous, because it's continuous, you can plug in the two and um, you're good there. Let's go back and look here. Some more of this vector stuff. It's, it's a different treatment though, you see. This is not how, this is not how it's done. Yeah, it's cool. Let's say here, a vector function v of u is called continuous at u equals a if and only if that limit exists. It is continuous over a set of u values if it is continuous at each value in the set. Here's an example, here's a, here's a vector function. Oh, this is an important one, where a and b are given fixed vectors. At u equals a, the limit of v of u is there for, you have this, and the absolute difference on the left-hand side can be made less than epsilon by taking that, that we have that, and then I see. So they're going through a proof. Mm -hmm. hmm. Look at this here. Example 22. Suppose that as u approaches a, the scalar functions, you have these three scalar functions here, have limits, respectively m, n, and p. Uh, then this vector here has the limit mi plus nj plus pk, because each of these have limits, which is the sum of the limits of the individual terms in v u. If in addition, these guys are continuous functions of u at u equal a with limits of those, respectively, it follows that v of u has the limit v of a, and so is continuous at u equal a. So, with this information, we can answer their question here, which was why is why is why is it continuous at all t? Well, for any t, each of these functions is continuous at all t. Therefore, you know, just like we saw before. So, if each of the component functions is continuous, then the actual uh, vector-valued function itself will be will be continuous. So. Some cool problems here. You see there's varying levels of difficulty too. Look at this one here, 2.5. Show that there is no t, that's fun, on the interval uh, between zero and one, such that that's true. Determine a value of u on the interval for which that's true. Cool, 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 cool. Good stuff. So you can spend an incredible amount of time with this book, even though it's really, really thin. I wanna emphasize that. So these, these, this is a math book. It's one for beginners. Um, I think a person could use it to learn vector calculus, and I do recommend it. I recommend every vector calculus book. Anyone you can get your hands on. I don't actually have that many. Um, and I have, I have thousands of books, but there's not that many books on vector calculus. So it's kind of cool to, to have one here. But yeah. If you want to learn math, including vector calculus, I have courses. Uh, I have a calculus three course, among other courses. 
All of my courses are on the Udemy website, which is a reputable place to have courses. But if you decide to purchase any of my courses, please consider using the links from the description of this video or from my website, freemathvids.com or mathsorcerer.com. When you use my links, it does two things. One, it helps me greatly. Two, I've lowered the prices to the bare minimum that it let me. So you should get a low price when you use my links. Um, and I have courses on most areas of mathematics. I don't have every course, but I have, I have a lot. So yeah. Anyways, uh, hopefully you've gotten something from this video. The key takeaway is vector calculus is basically calculus three. There's, there's a lot of stuff in here. Another thing I should mention is, you know, in, in Calc 3, the, the key problem in Calc 3, the biggest problem is time. Uh, if you're in a Calc 3 class, it's very hard for the teacher to cover everything without blowing through the class and losing everyone. You know, everyone would be, you know the teacher can cover everything if they go really fast, but then everyone's going to be totally lost. So if you keep a reasonable pace, it's hard to cover everything in Calc 3. So it helps to supplement always, and especially in Calc 3, with a book like this, especially like the Green Stokes and stuff. It's, you know, all that stuff is really useful. Everything, all of it, all of it. But again, there are things in Calc 3, like I don't think this has Lagrange multipliers. I don't think that's, let's look. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, yeah, there's no Lagrange multipliers in here, right? And that's something you'll learn in Calc 3. So there's a lot of topics, probably a lot of applications, other applications too, that are in a Calc 3 course that you won't find uh, in this book. But you can find all kinds of hidden gems uh, in this little book. One more, one, one final whiff. Awesome. Subscribe, like, share. I'll leave the link in the description to this book. And check out my other YouTube channel, The Internet Sorcerer. I post random stuff there. Also check out my other YouTube channel, Math Sorcerer Español. I've got two more, Internet Sorcerer and Math Sorcerer Español, which is basically this channel in Spanish. Sometimes I post uh, videos there. Anyways, as always, keep doing mathematics.